What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Al Kula. I'm a full-time photographer and this channel is all about my landscape, wildlife, and nature photography. So if you're into that stuff, please consider subscribing. Would love to have you on board. In today's video, what I want to talk about is the tripod head that I use for my wildlife photography. This is the Manfrotto, Manfrotto. I don't even know what this is. This is the Manfrotto MVH502AH. It's basically one of Manfrotto's fluid heads. I've actually owned this for a, a little over, uh, about a year and a half or something like that. And I've used it for a lot of video. What you guys don't probably know about me is I do real estate full time. So I do real estate photos, I do real estate video. So I've used this tripod on some real estate videos. I've also used this on just some like nature and outdoor videos that I've made. I've had it, been using it for a while. And more recently when I got serious into wildlife photography, I was like, well, okay, I can just use this for, um, for my wildlife as like a gimbal head or whatever. And compared to some of the other ones, those like L-shaped ones, this is a lot more cheaper. Those tend to be pretty expensive. Some of them are over double the price of this. I think this is like 175 bucks or something like that, which actually is not very expensive. And yeah, this has been like working awesome for me. Now, a buddy of mine, his father used to do a lot of photography and has one of those like L gimbal brackets or whatever. And so I used it for a little while and maybe I'm just used to this, I don't know, but I, I prefer this over that. And again, it's just my opinion and it's probably because I'm used to using this one. I know a lot of wildlife photographers actually do use the other like gimbal heads or whatever they're called. So yeah, this is just what I use, my thoughts about this. Um, Overall, I think it's great. Like even if you just want to use it for video and not necessarily wildlife. So down here, this big red, I don't know if you can see that, but this red um, knob here allows you to tighten the tension and loosen the tension. Uh, and that is for the panning. And then you have another knob, which is right here, which you can loosen and tighten. And this is for the, uh, the tilt. Um, up and down. When you tighten these up, it's extremely fluid, very, very smooth. You know, I've used some cheaper ones in the past and they, like whenever you're going to pan it, it's like, it, there's always that stutter moment. And if you're shooting 60 frames a second for, or 120 frames per second, you can slow the footage down and you don't really see that that much. But this has absolutely zero of that, like getting stuck or notching or whatever you want to call it. It just works really, really well. It has a, um, a little knob right here that you can tighten down and then you can no longer pan it so it sits in place. And then there's also another locking lever right here. Just turn and lock that and now you can't tilt it at all. So those work really well. Uh, you don't need to apply a lot of tension to either one of these knobs to get it to lock and stay in place, which is something that you don't find on the cheaper ones. You kind of feel like you have to turn them a lot and sometimes they still don't even stay where you want them to. Let me go ahead and just take this off the tripod. It's gonna be easier. So you have this adjustment lever here that you can loosen up and then you are able to slide the, uh, the tripod mounting clamp plate um, back and forth so this way when the camera and lens are on here and they're on the tripod you can like balance it out so it's not leaning back or it's not leaning forward so yeah you've probably seen me using this in all of my videos uh, for wildlife anyways i bought this little um clamp like tripod clamps or whatever and i basically just screwed this onto the manfrotto plate so yeah i just screwed this onto the bottom and then this is a regular arca swiss so you can put any camera on here that you want this is built extremely well i've dropped this a bunch of times putting it on and off of the tripod i've never had any issues at all let me just put this on here and show you what it looks like just put this on here loosen this up so this is the way it works and you can see you know this is wanting to tilt back so what I would do is loosen this screw right here and maybe I'll just slide this forward to balance it out a little bit and right there it's no longer it's no longer moving around so it's perfect so let me go ahead and kind of show you what this looks like kind of all mounted up so yeah I mean you can get this at B&H Amazon, you know, any, basically any uh, 
camera shop or whatever. They Adorama, they all sell it. And we can put this this way, put this on using this, and that's it. This is good to go. So it's extremely flexible. So one of the reasons I actually like this setup better than like those L-shaped brackets is because, okay, this is probably just me and I'm a weirdo, <laughs> that's fine. But when I'm sitting behind the camera, and actually this is a pretty good representation of how I shoot wildlife, right? I just feel like when that bracket is out here, it's like, it's in my way. I don't know, it's weird, right? So maybe it's it's probably just me. And again, I'm, I'm used to using this, so it's probably why I feel that way. But I just feel like when I'm behind the camera, like I want, I want full vision. Like I don't want anything sticking out on one side because what I tend to do is I tend to stay behind the camera, keep my face behind the camera. Um, and again, this is when I'm shooting like trying to shoot deer, birds, smaller wildlife, things like that, because you know, they have, they're much more scared of you and, and they want, want to run away. That's their first instinct. If you're shooting bears or like, you know, and a moose or big wildlife like that, elk, I mean, you don't really have to hide behind the camera. But yeah, I mean, I just kind of like, like to keep myself behind the camera. I never use the eye finder or the, I don't even know what it's called, the, the viewfinder. I always use the LCD screen when I shoot. I don't know why, I just prefer it that way. It's like I can see the picture right there. The only time I don't use the LCD screen is typically when I'm shooting birds. So I kind of hide, hide behind the camera and it kind of blocks my face because I'll probably have my other camo stuff on uh, or I'm in green at least or hiding behind a tree, but usually the face is the first thing that'll stick out. So yeah, I mean, I just wanted to make a quick video. And again, it's just great for video overall. Um, it's extremely smooth. Uh, very fluid, you know, no problems at all. And uh, on the right tripod, it just it just works fantastic. So what I also like about this, I don't know if you guys can see, but over here, there is, uh, this is a 3 8 thread. So you can thread, some, and actually there's one here and there's one on the other side. So you can thread something into there, like a monitor, if you're gonna use an external monitor to record to, or just, you know, a different viewing option. I think that pretty much covers everything. I don't know, it's just like clean, efficient, easy to use. Uh, doesn't give me any issues at all. And like, it just works, right? There's nothing worse than having something and it doesn't really do its job well. I've been there so many times, done that, I'm completely over that. So it's usually worth spending a little bit more money, buying a quality product that'll last you years and years as opposed to buying cheap stuff and it just it just never really seems to work the way you need it to or the way you want it to. That's it. I mean, that's the video, pretty straightforward. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down below. Do my best to get back to you, and I will see you guys in the next video. All right, thanks, bye.